and welcome to the April edition of Spartan Sports Central. We have an exciting episode ahead for you. Our track and field seasons are underway and spring tennis started recently as well. We welcome track coach Sergio Hinojosa and Franchel Hill and tennis coach Tim Wood. Our player profile this week is on Spartan sophomore golfer Chasey Bush. Welcome back to the show, Coach Hinojosa. Thanks Good for to having see you Mike. again. Appreciate it. All right, so you guys are up and running in track. You had your first um, first meet, varsity meet in Stafford, and what was it, almost 10 years? Uh, actually, it's, uh, two, since 2001 was the last time. Oh, wow, time so we even had more it, so, than that. Yeah, 17 yeah. years. It was, it was amazing to have it back. Uh, Spartan Relays, um, 14 teams competed. Um, we ended up getting third place. Um, Cy Falls, big 6A program, mm -hmm. won, won the meet. And, uh, Marshall right down the street got second and we got third so it was it was a great uh, it was just great to have the track meet back at Stafford. So you guys have a chance now I know last year there was the injury bug um, hit us a little bit but we have a chance uh, for second state championship in three years talk about that. Well knock on wood we uh, you're right we haven't we haven't hit any kind of an injury bug here lately uh, we've been pretty much uh, staying healthy and that's exciting to us. So the key is, you know, the, the healthy part of it is a big component of it. Um, can't run, can't compete if, if you're injured. So we are really excited and looking forward to contending that. So you have districts coming up and then regional after that. Uh, talk about that upcoming district meet out in uh, Sealy. Right, that's, uh, that will be next week, Wednesday and Thursday. We'll be at Sealy High School for the district championship um, competition. Um, the top four, from each event will then advance to the area round, um, which will be in Columbus the week after that. And then the top uh, four from that will advance to the regional championships in Kingsville. So really excited. In fact, I'm going today to Sealy for a district scratch meeting for the track meet where we get to decide some of the, just the, uh, not the logistical stuff, but some of the starting heights and things like that uh, for the district meet. So um, it'll be interesting to see how it all plays out. And you guys had a lot of success this past weekend at the Texas Relays with, um, I know Ryan Martin was one, and just talk about him and some of the other kids. Absolutely, yes. Um, we competed in all three relays, four by one, four by two, four by four. Um, you know, it's the, one of the largest track meets in the country. So uh, there was, a, I think, 50 uh, teams, relay teams, and uh, we finished third overall in the four by 200 meter relay and uh, we finished uh, third in the prelims of the four by one. Ended up six overall at the end out of 49 schools. And then in the four by 400 meter relay, we were the second place uh, team to finish after all the prelims were concluded out of the 49 teams as well. And um, we didn't run the finals at the end. We were kind of just wore out and it was just best for us to just not, not compete in that. But, um, Kenneth Bodwin, also one of our superstars, I guess, if you will, uh, on the team that won the state championship in 2016, who is a multi-event leader for us. Um, he does field events, running events, relays. We've asked him to, to help us this year with it. Also competed in the long jump and triple jump, uh, as well as the hurdles at the Texas Relays. And amongst the top 16 best in the entire state from all classifications, ended up seventh overall and ran a personal best of 38.56, which puts him in first place um, in the state of Texas right now in class 4A. So we're really, really excited about that. Ryan Martin, as you mentioned earlier, did get first place. Um, there were 60, 36, sorry, 36 100 meter runners. And we had actually two kids, um, Ryan Martin and Tashawn, advanced to the final round and then in the finals, uh, Ryan did get the gold medal and set a personal best of 10.54. So we're really excited about that. So I know you talked about a, a few of the established guys like uh, Martin, who went to state last year, and also Kenneth Bodwin's going to A&M Kingsville for track. But who have been some of the newcomers, some of the people that have surprised you a little bit maybe? Uh, we've got uh, a young kid who is going to be a uh, great help going forward. Uh, we used him actually just to kind of see where he would fall. Uh, and, and one of the relays this weekend, Jaden Walker, freshman, who has uh, really stepped up and, and competed well when we've asked him to on a couple of relays on a couple of varsity meets. Um, 
We got Jalen Hill is also he's a senior, but he's kind of new to us. Last year was his first year to run and kind of just came in as an alternate last year at towards the end of the year and has really stepped up and uh, has been um, you know, a big asset for us this year. I mean, you guys have this program has just been so successful. Sterling Riles. You've, Sterling Riles, okay. So, so does it almost like kind of recruit itself? You know, when, as as far as the kids that are going to Stafford High School, they want to be part of this. They want to. Yeah, I, I think so. Uh, you know, success breeds success, and uh, when your program starts to do well, then everybody want, people want to be a part of it. And I think we're seeing that with the younger groups. We have a pretty good eighth grade bunch, who for the first time this year competed at the TSU relays and uh, did really, really well. So um, yeah, I mean, we've got a lot of kids that want to be part of the track program uh, that are here at Stafford, and you know, sometimes you have a kid that you know, from the outside that says, hey, they're doing good things over there, so I'd like to be a part of that. So uh, we're excited about where it's going. Okay, well, great. We appreciate your time and coming out here on the show, Coach. Thanks again. <laughs> Next up is the player profile of Chasey Bush. <music> Welcome back to the program. Our player profile this week is on Stafford sophomore Chasey Bush. She's achieving high goals in the classroom and low scores on the golf course. One of the sadly unsung team sports at SMSD is golf, and one of its rising stars is sophomore Chasey Bush. Well, at first I was gonna do tennis, and then my friend Jasmine, she was like, no, be on the golf team with me. And I was sort of like, golf? Like, we have a golf team? And then, so I go to the meeting and everyone there just welcomed me and it was like family from the start. So I knew I just had to try and I fell in love with the sport. Uh, this is Chase's second year with the team. Last year was the first year as a freshman. Uh, I'm just a raw beginner, but she has the uh, positive attitude to uh, always want to do well. She practiced real hard in the summertime and also during you know, during the summer taking lessons here at Quill Valley with the, with the pro. So she has vastly improved her game and also is, she's a real positive person for the team. She's also a cheerleader and, and does other activities. She's so, she's uh, a real go-getter. It's like a my stress reliever. When I come out here, I don't think about any schoolwork or anything, it's just me and golf. Just uh, as far as her lead, I would say it is just her positive attitude even on days when it's cold wet and rainy and come out here and with good spirits and have uh, uh we i like this group of kids that i have this year probably one of my better ones not only skill wise but also positive attitude these kids love coming out here to the golf course they love playing together chasey's devotion to golf doesn't end with the spartan team She's also a mentor for young golfers in the First Tee program. Oh, it's so much fun. So every Saturday from 1.30 to 4.30, I come out and I teach little kids from maybe ages 7 to 11 how to play golf. It's so fun working with all the different types of personalities and the different kids, teaching them the sport I love. Oh, it's helped me just focus and practice what I teach. And also it's opened doors for me, like meeting new people that they bring in and learning about different things like stock and owning different businesses and just volunteering. We are located, and we're lucky enough to be located around a bunch of golf courses, uh, of the good and bad side. The good side is we got golf courses all around us. The bad side is we got golf courses all around us, so that means a lot of the better players end up going to bigger schools. But what hurts us also is I don't have the numbers like some of the other schools. I suppose, you know, a team consists of five boys and five girls. Uh, I haven't had those numbers in a long time. I miss the, uh, I don't have the quantity, but I do have the quality. So the good kids that do have, uh, never have to worry about as far as grades or showing up to practice or being here because uh, they love playing the game, they love being around each other. Uh, my goals academically, um, I want to remain in the top 5%, maybe higher, and graduate um, in the top five and attend UT University at Austin okay. or Texas A&M. I want to make an impact 
on someone's lives. I don't know who it will be, or I just know I'm gonna make an impact. Not only in Stafford, not only do they play golf, they do three or four other things. Uh, we, they, I got doing golf, UIL uh, uh, drama, I got doing, they're doing track, I got them cheering, I got them tennis. So, you know, they're, they do all kind of variety of other sports. So what we do in Stafford is we gotta learn how to share our athletes, and which is fine. You know, we don't, I never had, we don't have any problems. So if somebody's gotta go somewhere else or somebody's gotta do something else, you know, as long as we know ahead of time, we can, we can adjust. Well, I say just don't knock it till you try it. It's a lot of fun. It might be a little boring to watch on TV, but once you get out here, it's a different experience. For Spartan Sports Central, this is Randall Williams. Wow, what a great segment. We expect to see Chasey Bush play golf in college. Next up is the girls track coach, Franchelle Hill. Welcome back to Spartan Sports Central. Coach Hill joined the SHS staff last year after coaching at her alma mater, Hightower. Welcome to the show, Coach. It's Hi, good to have you on the show for the first time. Well, it's exciting. Very exciting to be here today. All right, so you're a new coach. I know you mentioned to me before the show that you graduated from Hightower High School. They've obviously done very well at track and field. And then, you know, Stafford has been a 4A power in uh, track and field. So talk about how you decided to come over here and join the Spartan Nation. So while I was at Hightower, Hightower is a track powerhouse. Has been for years. I graduated from there. So, you know, I know track and field. I wanted to come somewhere and build another powerhouse, a 4A powerhouse, a powerhouse that could turn into something that was bigger than what we've ever seen at Stafford before, so. Okay, and you have some, um, you had some stuff to work with here because you've, over the years, we've had kids qualify for state um, on the girls' side, but you really want to make it to where you guys are competing for state championships. Yeah, you know, the boys have done tremendous things. They've always been a tremendous thing. But you know, for the girls, it's building a program and building that confidence for them. And I really believe that this is our ground year where we're building, but next year we're going to be a powerhouse. And I'm so excited to be a part of this program right now. I know you had um, have Faith Odigi on the team, and, and the viewers uh, got to see a player profile on Faith last, uh, last month. And she's one of the leaders. Who are some of your other leaders on the team? There's Jayla Pratt who's a sophomore, Sade Hines, who's a freshman, We've got a great JV staff, great JV team, like Skylar Carrier and Bianca Frome. It's a very, very, very young team. With Faith being the only senior, it's gonna be crazy next year. Okay, so what about, um, were there any kids who kind of um, were, you know, surprised you that you thought, oh, maybe they'll be JV this year and then they, they're on varsity and they're, you know, competing? Yeah, it's, Actually, a couple of them. So being a new coach, I didn't really know any of these kids. I looked at their previous records, and, you know, I looked at things that maybe other coaches don't look at, and all of them are a surprise to me because they've all put in some serious work and did some serious adjustments to themselves to be successful, and it's all going to pay off when we get to district. We're going to see some really great results come back from those Stafford girls. So you have a district meet coming up in Sealy. Yes. And then another meet after that, I think it's area. Correct. That's in Columbus. Yes. So you guys are going to be traveling out west quite yeah, a bit. Yeah, we're going to be on the move. And then south to Kingsville and then hopefully back up, back, back out west to Austin. Yep. Um, do some of these kids have a chance to qualify for state? Actually, there are maybe like one or two kids who I don't see qualifying. That entire staff. For state? For state. Oh, wow. That entire team has been putting in some major work. And it hasn't seemed like it because we've been competing at such big meets. But when it comes down to like district and area and regions where it really counts, they're going to blow out the competition. And you were at the Texas Relays this past weekend. Yes. Tell me about that. We had a tremendous great meet. My 4x4 dropped a whole 10 seconds, and that's like unheard of. They went from running wow. 418s to running 408, and they're like third in the state right now. And they went from being like 11th. So, you know, they're getting very competitive. My 100-meter runner, Faith Odigi, killed it. She pr did the best that she's ever run her entire high school career, so I'm very excited for her. Wow. The four by one went out there, they competed hard, barely missed the finals. So, you know, it's a great, great thing going into district. Okay, so in addition to your work with the track team, um, most of our viewers know this, but all of our coaches, with the exception of uh, athletic directors who are um, considered administrators, also, you know, work hard in the classroom as teachers. So. Um, 
Ms. Hill was uh, our committed to SMSD or hashtag committed to SMSD employee for the month of December. Um, so she was honored at a school board meeting and everything like that as an <laughs> English teacher at Stafford Middle School. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Talk about um, you know your work in the classroom and um, what you've been able to accomplish there. That's been you know in a wonderful experience. I believe that what you do in the classroom goes in other places too. So making that transition over for myself to be disciplined for those kids every day and going hard for them and going just as hard as I do for my athletic kids, for my academic kids, it's been tremendous. I can't wait to see their star results. I'm trying to win all around this school year. Win in the classroom, win in athletics. Okay, that's awesome. <laughs> all right, thanks coach. We appreciate you being on the show. Thank you. All right, next up is our interview with tennis coach, Tim Wood. Welcome back to Spartan Sports Central. Good to have you on the show, Coach. Thanks, Mike. Always a pleasure to be here. All right, so um, you guys had a lot of success last fall where you um, you know, made a run a little bit there in the um, postseason. So talk about how that could carry over to this season. Right, building on the successes of uh, last semester when we had our first inaugural season of fall tennis, we qualified for the regional tournament. So that was a big boost for the team. Um, and m most of our players did decide to stick along and play uh, spring tennis as well, which is a little bit different setup. So spring tennis is individual tennis. You have your girls singles, guys singles, boys doubles, girls doubles, and also mixed doubles. So instead of the whole team competing against an entire other team, it's each individual in their entry doing the best they can. But I think the successes of the fall are carrying over. We've seen already Several of our um, student athletes get some medals for mixed doubles, for girls singles, for boys doubles, and girls singles. So uh, we're hoping that will carry us through into our district tournament coming up. So you talk about that district tournament, it's gonna be uh, this week in um, Belleville. Tell me more about that and some of the teams that you're gonna play there and the opportunities and challenges that lie ahead. Absolutely, so this coming Thursday we'll have a district tournament in Belleville. Uh, it's District 25-4A and we'll be playing against Columbus, Sealy, Needville, um, Belleville, and Royal. Although I believe Royal may not bring a team this year. Belleville historically has a very strong team. Um, we know that we have a tough competition that we're playing against. Last year, we managed to squeak out a second place uh, in the JV division, and we're hoping to get first place in JV division in regards to varsity, which are those that qualify to continue on to regionals and then hopefully eventually state, we have four of our players that are gonna represent us. Jasmine Nguyen will be playing girls singles. Um, Joseph Lee will be playing boys singles. And Mark Escudero, who is a senior, um, and Paul Fung, who is a junior, will be playing boys doubles. So we're really hoping that they'll play their best and have a chance and have a shot at going, continuing on to regionals. And how has that doubles team done so far for, um uh, Paul Fung and um, Escudero. You know, it's interesting, um, unlike team tennis where you might stick to the same setup, we have a chance to rotate things around. And uh, Paul, he's played singles this season. He's also played doubles with Jaden Bonner. And Mark has played a lot of doubles actually with Joseph. But um, I give a lot of uh, credence to what the students, what their preferences are, especially when it's their last year like it is for Mark. And they wanted to give it a shot together. So. Uh, they actually are just starting practicing last week and this week in preparation, but based on their results separately, I think that they'll play well together. Okay, and then um, your program has grown quite a bit since you arrived there to, with the program. Um, just talk about that. Absolutely. Uh, when I, My first season four years ago when I was an assistant coach, I believe that there were about 12 players. The next year we grew up to, I think, 16 or 18. Last year we had like 25 this year we've had 40 players so we're excited about the growth more people are coming out uh, it's kind of a, a snowball effect you have a certain group of friends and then they invite their friends over and um, I think it's a good thing that's happening with tennis becoming a, a more played sport I think the administration has kind of had to see it as a bigger sport than it was previously our budget had to be you know increased a little bit just to cover food expenses because we have such a larger team than we've had in the past. But it's been a lot of fun. We continue to be a no-cut team. So anyone that comes out that shows the work ethic to come to practice, to play their best, to learn, regardless of where they're starting, and many of them do start as beginners, we take them, play them, and try to grow them as tennis players. 
but it's also a great sport as far as like um, you know some of these sports you can play in high school then it's challenging to play afterwards this is some something where someone could pick up a racket and then just play you know you know well into their um, you know twilight years even you're right yeah. and that's the really good thing about tennis is um, it doesn't matter really you could pick it up later many of these kids like I've said their first time picking up a tennis racket and playing and even learning how to play is joining the team and coming out and coach Goldberg and I working hard with them to teach them the basic skills but uh, it's been gratifying for me to see some of our former players who continue to play the game and some of them are actually um, coming back and trying to help with practice and so that's very encouraging and it is something that they can keep up as a hobby recreationally well after high school into college and through the twilight years. In fact, one of our players, I believe, uh, at least last year, I, I'm not sure if this year, was actually playing on a team for a local college. So that was really cool. Oh, Saint, wow, that's Saint wonderful. Thomas. Yeah. That's wonderful. All right, thanks for being on the show again, Coach. We always appre appreciate you having me here. Thanks, Mike. All right, well, that wraps up our show for today. Um, we'll see you next month. This program was produced on the Stafford campus of Houston Community College.